I think it's time for a wool to cloth project. It's been a little bit since I've done one, so let's do one right now. What I want to do is start with some wool and a bit of alpaca, and I am going to card it, spin it, weave it, and maybe do some whimsical embellishments to it so that I will have my very own handmade cloth at the end of this project. I have an idea of what I want this project to be. I'm thinking a cute headscarf, like a, like a handkerchief. I think that would be fun. And I can add a little bit of embroidery to it for a whimsical embellishment. I want to make this a triangle shape and I have a perfectly sized pen loom for that. I think this will be adorable and fulfill my need for some whimsy. <laughs> to accomplish a wool to cloth project, of course, we need some wool. Fortunately, I have some. This bump of wool was sent to me by English Blue Ribbon Farm. I have a fleece from one of their CVM sheep named Lily. I have processed it from wall, raw wool to yarn. And that's as far as I got. <laughs> I have plans to knit a sweater and I'm embarrassingly late on that project, but it is coming. So is the rest of my Viking Age cloth project. But it's been really hot this summer and I've been busy doing other things like spinning flax and cotton. I'm dropping alpaca on the floor. <laughs> Sometimes I just need a fresh project as a pick-me-up when I transition from one batch of projects to another. And that's okay because crafty detours are part of the process for me. And I'd rather be excited about what I'm doing in the moment than grinding through something that I start feeling obligated for. What do you do? <laughs> do you finish your current project every time? Or do you take a detour of enthusiasm for something fresh when the inspiration strikes, when you need to sort of get your crafty mojo back? Let me know. This bump that English Blue Ribbon Farm sent me, if you want one for yourself, by the way, you can find them in their web shop. They have a variety of combinations of wool and colors. They're beautiful. So go check them out on the English Blue Ribbon Farm web shop. And so in this combo, we have CVM, Romney, and Alpaca. CVM stands for California Variegated Mutant. Yes, that's right, mutant. <laughs> mutant sheep. Uh, it, it has to do with the color that's expressed in this breed of sheep. It is a fine wool, and this CVM is dyed blue with indigo, and it is so pretty. I think it would be fun to blend all of these wools and alpaca together with the drum carter. I'm mentally imagining the characteristics of these three different fibers and how they will interact in the final fabric that I create. Even wool can be very different from one breed to the next. This CVM is very soft and has lots of bounce to it. And the Romney has strength and it brings more durability. It's a more sturdy wool. While the alpaca will give it some softness and a little extra drape. I think with their powers combined, this will make a lovely heathered yarn. I really do love blending fibers like this. I feel like I'm doing woolly alchemy. So let's head to the drum carter. When I was planning out this project, I asked my Discord community what questions they had when they were starting out spinning. And we kind of brainstormed some things together. So I'm going to sprinkle some of those questions throughout this video. If you want to try spinning, I hope this will give you some good inspiration and some good tips. And if you are a more experienced spinner and you're just here to enjoy the project, and you have some tips to share, feel free to add those to the comments as well. I'm using my 90 TPI drum carter from Brother. I like this one because it can handle the fine wools like this CVM 
and alpaca, but it doesn't get bogged down with some of the toothier medium wools like the Romney either. Which brings me to my first tip. Frequently, people will want to know which wool breed is best for beginners. Starting with raw wool is potentially overwhelming. So if you're just starting out, then on top of spinning, you're learning cleaning and preparing wool and knowing what to look for in a fleece. And scouring is its own set of skills and it requires extra equipment like cards or combs and <laughs> so as a beginner I would recommend finding something ready for spinning that doesn't have lots of extras in it like silk, naps, nylon, like all that chunky textured stuff. Just keep it simple. Some breeds that beginners have good success with are breeds like this Romney. Also Cheviot and Blueface Lester are favorites for beginners as well. Moreno can be a little tough for beginners, but it is fairly easy to find, especially online. So if that's what you have, if that's what you can get your hands on, start with that. Look for some combed top, sometimes that's called roving, or a smoothly carded bat like what I'm making here, maybe in your favorite color. I truly believe that enthusiasm can carry you through if you're really determined to just go for it. So don't let anyone tell you that there's only one right way to start spinning. Just get started. This CVM was dyed with indigo and I like this light powdery blue we are creating in this blend. I'm always fascinated at how wool colors blend like paint colors do. So I think I'll put this through one more time and really blend the fibers together so it won't distract from my embroidery later on with too much visual texture or color. I'm still not sure what that embroidery is gonna be. We'll find out when we get there. Oh, this looks like forbidden cotton candy. Oh friends, we need a moment to just appreciate the floof it's so floofy. I just want to curl up in it and be a floof burrito all day. But no, <laughs> we must spin the floof. Also, it's a beautiful day. So I think I'm going to get this spin ready to take with me to my local forest preserve. There's no wrong way to spin from a bat like this. You can pull it into strips, spin from corner to corner, pull off a pinch of floof at a time, or pull it gently apart until it becomes a long floof noodle, or basically carded roving. I've been asked a lot if it's better to start with a spindle or a spinning wheel. I think lots of people have started with a spindle and then moved on to a spinning wheel because the barrier to entry is a lot lower with a spindle. You can easily make your own with items from a craft store. Even a beautiful rare wood hand carved spindle is far less expensive than a whole spinning wheel. Spinning wheels are beautiful and can be very efficient, but they're also more complex. They're machines and so they cost more. So if you're a beginner, start with the tool you can afford, find what's most comfortable for your body, and maybe that means you start with an e-spinner. Lots of beginners find success with a cross-arm spindle like Turkish spindles, and many people have started with a drop spindle like the one I'm using. I would say if you really want someone to say, this is the spindle to start with, I would go with a cross arm Turkish style spindle or a top world drop spindle but again it still kind of depends and you're gonna find that one tool clicks better with your body mechanics and the style you want to spin with and sometimes you'll find the tool that gives you the yarn you want right away uh, maybe you'll find something that fits better with your lifestyle and and that might not be the same for somebody else. So it's all very personal and it can be almost impossible to give a single answer to everyone who's interested in spinning as to what they should start with. I know that sounds like a non-answer, but 
I'm, you know, honestly, that's why it's so confusing to find a spindle to start with. But just remember, spindles aren't kindergarten for spinning wheels. They are just different but equally effective tools. And you can be a beginner or an advanced spinner with a spindle, just like you can be a beginner or an advanced spinner with a spinning wheel or an e-spinner. Any spinning experience you have will benefit you on your next spin. Really, it's all practice and practice makes progress. So start with something and test it out and figure out what you like. When I'm wrapping my yarn onto my spindle, sometimes I'll wrap it very carefully for the aesthetic because it makes a fantastic Instagram picture, let's be honest. Really though, it doesn't need to be perfectly wrapped on, but it does help to wrap it somewhat evenly because it will be easier to get off in the end and it can help keep the spindle more balanced so it holds more wool before it gets overloaded. How do you know if your spindle is overloaded? It doesn't spin as long and generally it just starts to be annoying. Your spindle will let you know when it's done by acting cranky. This yarn is all spun up and I'm going to ply it by winding it into a center pull ball. I also have a few more ounces to spin so I'll probably get this all finished up tomorrow. I've talked about how center pull balls can affect your twist but in this case, the ply is going to have a fairly high twist and with continuous strand weaving, there's not really as much of an issue with the twist being affected like if you're knitting in the round on socks on small gauge needles or things like that. So I'm really not worried about applying from a center pull ball being a big issue with this yarn and it's a good way to know that I've used up all of my singles and it's going to be fine for this project. So that's a reoccurring theme that when you know the rules and you understand how and why things work, you'll know when and how you can break those rules. When the ply is finished, I'll wash the yarn with hot water and a bit of soak while sloshing it around so that it has a little start to felting. That will help it hold together and reduce the risk of it coming apart while I'm weaving. And this is my favorite part. Smacking or <laughs> thwacking the yarn against something while it's wet shocks the fibers so they get a bit of a surface felt to them and it also causes the crimpy fibers to open up and so it gives the the woolen spun yarn, the loft that we associate with a woolen spun yarn, and the yarn really blooms and it's very beautiful. This is a good thing to do after doom scrolling on your phone for too long or if you have a bad day. Go home and thwack some yarn and you'll feel much better. Finally, it's time to weave this bandana, so let's get weaving. Continuous strand weaving is a method of weaving where you create the warp and the weft from one strand of yarn. The way this works on a triangle pin loom is by taking a loop of yarn over under, opening up the loop, and bringing each strand around the next nail or pin on the legs of the triangle. The weft is tucked up against the sides where the cloth is forming and the bottom of the loop that is strung across between the legs of the triangle when that was all opened up and separated, it becomes the next row of warp. This row will get added into the next pass of the over-unders and that is how you build the warp out of the weft at the same time. This method of weaving creates an almost effortless plaid if you switch colors of yarn as you weave because not only will you get the stripes in the warp, but also the weft because they are woven in at the same time. But I'm not creating a plaid with this project. I have this lovely powdery blue and I think it will look amazing with some embellishment. I'm thinking purple because of course I am. <laughs> The possibilities for embellishing a project like this are endless. I love adding fringe on my larger triloom projects to create beautiful hand spun shawls, but 
I want to wear this as a bandana on my head, so I don't think fringe is the way to go. What I want to try is surface crochet. It looks like an embroidered chain stitch, but because the weave of this cloth is so open, I can stick a crochet hook right in there and draw up a loop from the yarn supply underneath. Then I put my hook into a different hole, draw up another loop, and it's as simple as that. This is so much fun. I feel like I could get really fancy and complex with this technique, but I really do want to get back to my other projects and I feel like I'm ready to do that. So to get this one finished up, a simple heart will do. You can remove a piece like this from the pins without any finishing because the salvages are interlocked during the weaving and nothing will unravel. But I like doing a crochet chain across the top because I think it gives it a bit of reinforcement and it looks really nice. Since I want this to fit over my hair and my hair is really thick, I'm going to add some ties onto the corners with some simple crochet. Are you ready to see it all finished up? Friends, it's finished. I have made cloth. I've made a cute, so cute accessory and I love it so much. This is how the surface embroidery turned out. I did need a little bit of extra length on the ends of the triangle shape to be able to tie it, especially if I have it going under my hair. I needed a little extra room for that, but it worked out and it's very comfortable to wear. I think that doing the crochet across the top edge of the uh, triangle was the way to go because this looks great across the front and a little bit more finished. I know that a lot of people are going to ask me where I got this triangle loom. Unfortunately, I got this in person at a fiber festival and the maker, I haven't found them online anywhere and I honestly don't remember their name. It was over a decade ago. It was a long time ago, but uh, they're not very hard to make. I would just suggest that if you do make one for yourself, make sure you pre-pilot the holes because that many nails going into a single piece of wood can split the wood, but they're really simple to make if you're handy with, you know, cutting angles, putting it together. It's just got this little thing here to give it some support and that's it. It's a really simple tool. It's a great way to weave and it's fast. And with this surface embroidery, there's so much potential <laughs> for that. Oh my goodness. You could get any kind of cross stitch uh, design or any picture or thing that you wanted to do and put it on a grid and that's your template and go to town because it's already like it's on a hoop except it's a triangle and it's it's just right there. You could put any designs on it. This is so cool to me. There is so much possibility for creativity with this. So I hope someone is ex inspired by this project to go and try this and uh, make some of these little bandanas because I think, I think it's really, 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 really cute. And I love wearing hand spun. I love finding unique and interesting ways to use hand spun, especially small quantities. In the end, this whole uh, handkerchief with the bulky yarn took an ounce and almost a half. So an ounce and a half of wool gave me this much cloth. It gave me this much with a bulky weight. That's really awesome. That is a good project for a small quantity. So if you are into breed studies, if you're into, uh, you know, mixing a two ounce bat could make one of these because it's woven, because it's over unders, it spreads that material out more than if it was crocheted or knit or something where it loops and doubles back on itself. So I'm, yeah, can you tell I'm excited? Are you excited? There's so much possibility with this to just have absolutely adorable accessories. What is coming up next on this channel? Don't click away yet because you'll want to know. First of all, I have been doing a lot of work on the videos that are ending up over on my Patreon. I've been working on completing the Certificate of Excellence in Hand Spinning for the Hand Weavers Guild of America. It's a massive project. I've got over 
almost, I think, 50 episodes of that now over on my Patreon showing all of the different spins I've done for that whole journey. But that comes to an end. They have to have it by September to be judged. After it's judged, I will take the whole thing out and we'll go through it on this channel and you'll be able to see each of those spins. Um, but if you want all the details of it, go check that out on my Patreon. Also coming up, I'm going to get back into my apron dress project, my Viking aged uh, costume. It is underway, but I need to get back to getting that done. So we will be hand spinning, we'll be doing more weaving, lots more weaving coming up. So that is what we have to look forward to. And also I got this great wheel behind me uh, finished and working and I restored, you can see a little tiny bit of a distaff right there. I restored another flax wheel with some really cool history. <laughs> look at this distaff. Isn't this beautiful? <laughs> oh, I love spinning flax. So we have so many exciting things coming up on the channel. You won't want to miss it. Make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you in the next one. Happy spinning fiber friends.